Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna give you the basics of how to safely connect a portable generator to your home to power it in the case of an outage. Where I live, the power has been nice and stable lately, but I have been seeing in the news a lot of places that have been hit by winter storms and by power outages, especially in the Southern United States and Texas especially. One thing as an electrician that I've been asked over the years is how a portable generator can be hooked up to a home in order to give it power in the case where the electricity supplied by the utility has gone out. There are some really important considerations to make before you go ahead and do this. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the basic steps of making sure that your house is safe, that the correct breakers are turned off, and it's ready to go for you to connect the power from your generator and keep the most essential things in your home running. And no, I'm not talking about your computer or your internet router. I'm talking about things like your furnace. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing to take a look at is what kind of generator you have, what wattage it's rated for, and also what voltage it's capable of producing. A lot of the cheaper camping type generators will only have a 120 volt outlet because they're mainly there to supply a plug-in for a, an appliance that you'd already have to use it while you're camping and then to uh, turn off the generator when it's not in use. If you haven't bought a generator specifically to back up the power in your home, it's probably not going to be a direct replacement for what the utility already provides, but it's more of a band-aid solution to get you through the time when the power is not available and so that your pipes don't freeze, nobody uh, suffers hypothermia or those kinds of things. While you won't be able to supply all the power to your appliances, you can make this work with a 15 amp, 120 volt outlet, the simple kind of receptacle that you see everywhere in your home. So if you have a generator with at least one of those, you're probably going to be able to at least keep the heat on in your home. Assuming that you have a gas or oil burning a furnace and not electric heat, which usually requires 240 volts. So just a quick recap, in our homes, we use Edison three wire in North America, which is a combination of 120 and 240 volts. The 240 volts comes in on two what we call hot or live legs inside the panel of your home that also has a neutral between the two that gives 120 volts to neutral from each of those hot legs. That means that inside the panel, each single pole breaker that controls just one circuit is all going to be 120 volts, though from top to bottom in your panel, they alternate between which of the two hot legs is powering it. So let me give you the 120 volt option first. So if you have a generator that only produces 120 volts, it's very easy to make a cable that goes between the generator and an outlet simply by taking an extension cord cutting off the female receptacle end of it and wiring in a male plug that matches the same as the other end. That way you can plug into the receptacle on the generator and also plug into a receptacle on your home, creating a flow of electricity that will power half of the circuits in your home, or at least half of the single pole circuits. Now, before you actually go ahead and do that, make sure that you turn off the main breaker for your panel. That's the one that feeds the power into the panel from the utility. And it's super important that you turn off this breaker before feeding any electricity to your panel because it can be very dangerous for two main reasons if you don't. The first reason is that if you don't turn off that breaker, the electricity that you provide is gonna flow past just your own local home and it'll start feeding into the electrical grid. Not only does that mean that other people in your neighborhood might also be able to use that power and overload your generator, but it also means that it's feeding the transformer in your neighborhood a lot higher voltage because it gets stepped up to transmission voltage. Our utility workers are, are hard at work trying to make sure that they can get power restored and they're expecting the power to be de-energized or the circuits to be open when they're working on it. Now they usually take precautions to make sure that they're not contacting anything improperly, even if it's known not to be carrying electricity. But if you're energizing that circuit from your home, it does pose a significant risk to somebody working on the power lines. The other reason is that a generator needs to be properly synchronized before it connects with line power. So if you leave the utility supply connected, when the power does come back on, your generator and it are gonna be in opposition to each other and there's gonna be a struggle that your generator is probably not gonna win. So to protect your equipment, to protect the utility workers, and to protect uh, yourself, you wanna make sure that that main breaker is switched off before you supply any additional power to your electrical panel. So with that main breaker turned off, you can simply plug in this double-ended cable 
one end into a receptacle in your home and the other end into the generator. That's going to supply power to all of the 120 volt circuits that are connected to that same leg of the original supply. If you were to look from the top to bottom on electrical panel, it would mean that you know this section would be, the next would be off, the next one would be energized, the next one would be off, all the way down alternating through your panel depending on which leg you're actually feeding. In the case of a gas or oil fired furnace, it's typically gonna only use 120 volts to run the fan and some of the controls. So depending on what receptacle you plug your generator into, it's gonna depend on whether or not you catch the furnace on it. Most likely you're gonna plug your, into a receptacle that's most obvious, one that's already on the exterior of your home because your generator should always be run outdoors. And you're gonna find pretty quickly if it does actually work for the furnace or if that's on the other leg of the panel. Because I never recommend someone without proper training opening up their panel, I would, instead of telling you to move circuits around in your panel, tell you to try hooking that plug up to different receptacles and seeing if you're going to get a different circuit instead that would be connected to the furnace. So don't just try another outdoor receptacle, but maybe run an extension cord into your house and try a few different receptacles in different rooms to see if you can find one that's on the same side of the panel and that would then feed the furnace and the other things that are on that leg of the panel. If you've turned off the main breaker and you're doing this as I've instructed, there isn't really a risk to moving it around to different receptacles, just knowing that as you feed only half of the circuits in your home, sensitive things like electronics, you might wanna unplug all those first so that you're not gonna do any kind of damage to them by removing and adding the power to the circuit. Things like computers definitely should be unplugged or even sensitive things like TVs, video games, that kind of thing as well. Now, if you have a generator that's capable of outputting 240 volts on one receptacle, then you have the additional opportunity to power both legs of the panel and to be able to supply at least basic service to all of the circuits in your home. In order to do this, you'd also be making a double-ended cord, the one that plugs into the 240 volt outlet on the generator, and then one that matches one of the 240 volt devices in your house. The most common devices that we have in our homes that use 240 volts is the oven and the dryer. So if you were to put a double-ended cord where one end matches the transformer and the other one matches the dryer or the stove or the oven, whichever is most convenient to plug into, then one of those would work well. Other homes might use 240 volt circuits for other things. And so with a little bit of research and know-how, you might be able to find other opportunities as well, but those are the best ones. If you're using a 240 volt supply from your generator and you can connect it to a 240 volt outlet, all of the circuits could have basic electrical supply and then you won't have to guess or move things around if your furnace is not one of those. One of the most important considerations as you're doing this is to know that no matter what you're supplying from the generator, you can't exceed the rating of the generator. And that's why it's really important to only use the most essential things during these power outages. If you try to run laundry or you try to uh, cook meals with your stove and you need that 240 volt power or you need higher current, it's really not a good idea to do that because you're probably gonna exceed the capacity of your generator. Use the things that are most critical to life, to safety of your home, to prevent the pipes from freezing, all of those kinds of things. If you have gas powered uh, fireplace or gas powered oven, it might still require 120 volts to run the controls or to run the blower fans, those kinds of things. And so being able to do this can give you enough opportunity to use those devices and to get enough heat going in your home, which is typically the thing most critical when we have a power outage. Things like your fridge or freezer, you might also be tempted to run, but only do them once you've made sure that you're not gonna exceed the rating of the generator. Having a little bit of food spoil is a lot different than having pipes rupture because the house was too cold and everything froze. If you're looking for more permanent backup solutions, if you have an area where there's frequent power outages or where you wanna make sure that you have a system that can run your entire home if necessary, you're probably not gonna do that in an emergency situation, but you could look for a generator online at an auction or wherever you find them that is rated for the full amperage that your home could use. Now most homes are gonna use a 100 amp service, so you might not need to go that big, but enough of a usage that you can run all of your appliances safely and not exceed the capacity of the generator. If you're looking for a permanent solution, one that you can go back to time and time again, you're not going to use this double-ended cable like I mentioned, but you're gonna wire it into your panel using what we call a bypass switch. A bypass switch will prevent the electrical system or the grid from being powered by your generator 
and it will isolate your circuits and your panel to just what's produced by the generator. We have manual transfer switches and we have automatic ones. Manual ones where when the power goes out, you're gonna to have to flip the switch over and start your generator manually or automatic ones where the generator kicks on automatically if it detects a power outage and the transfer switch is moved automatically as well so that it seamlessly moves to power your house with the generator when the supply from the utility goes out. I hope that does a good job of answering the basics of what's required in this situation. Like I said, the most important thing is that you're isolating the main breaker and turning that off so that you're not gonna back feed the utility system. Making sure that you create a double-ended cord that's safe and well-made so it's not gonna shock anybody that contacts it and then just experimenting to see which circuits you need to power in your home in order to get the essentials running. If you have any questions beyond that, seek out a local electrician who might be available or ask me in the comments below. I can try to answer as many questions as possible. When in doubt with electricity, always seek professional advice, but this is the kind of situation when an emergency arises where it might be necessary to just find something that works in the short term so that your house doesn't freeze up, everyone stays safe and sound, and you get through and get back to life when the power comes back on. Of course, when you know that the power is back on, you're not gonna know that in your own home because you've turned off the breaker, but if you were to temporarily disconnect it, try the breaker periodically, or if you're following local alerts, maybe on your cell phone or something like that, uh, you'll know it's time to disconnect that double-ended plug from your home and then turn the main breaker back on, which will energize your panel from the utility and give you power like you had in the first place. If you like these kind of videos and the content was helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I post a new video every weekend. I'm always looking for new ideas, questions that I can answer. So if you have any of those, send me an email or write a comment below the video. Until next time, in all your circumstances, whether emergency or not, don't be afraid to be balder.